Good afternoon, all. Right. Uh, so, welcome you all for the second part of the webinar session. I hope uh, you all can hear me clearly, right? Uh, so far, we have 11 attendees. So, while others are joining, let's start the lesson. Okay. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, if you can't hear me well, right, you can drop a message and uh, in a like uh, short time of a period like uh, you would be able to like switch on your microphones so you can raise any questions that you have like uh, during the session or else like uh, chat is always there right so you would be able to like send me some, any like uh, queries that you want to like discuss with me okay so uh, according to the like first session we did the er diagrams and we discuss few questions as well. And according to your request, today I'm going to discuss about the normalization, right? So please children, if you can't hear my voice clearly, please let me know, right? I hope uh, I, I'm audible and uh, like I'm going to share my screen as well with you, okay? Uh, right, so let me share my screen. Okay, I hope it is visible for you. Right. So, uh, like, uh, in order to like make things more easier, here I have created. I'm going to use a small presentation regarding the normalization, right? And meanwhile, I'm switching to the whiteboard, and I'm going to like demonstrate some like questions for you, right? Let's do some questions, and uh, like, uh, meanwhile, I'm going to switch to my whiteboard to like demonstrate some uh, like um, some ideas right where we want to discuss more right so the main thing like that i'm going to discuss like uh, i mean the normalization like uh, i i when i when i'm going through your syllabus i have seen that uh, you are discussing about the four uh, sorry three normalization forms right which is available in your syllabus that is the first normal form and the second normal form and the third normal form right and we like uh, when you're like uh, if you're going to continue your studies from the computer science right you would learn another normalization form which is known as the fourth one we are not saying it as the fourth normal form we are we are having a separate uh, name for that that is the bc NF, right? A uh, voice code normal form, right? So I'm going to teach that one as well. That is really easy, pretty much easy. That means once you have come. Completed up to three normal, third normal form that is on the uh, BCNF, right? So we have to just, we have to just recheck it. That's it, right? So children, let's see what is this normalization, right? Uh, so let me put it to the right. Okay. So children, like uh, uh, normalization, what is this normalization? Uh, it is a technique of organizing the data in the database, right? We could say in simple terms, it is a technique of organizing the data, right? In a database, we know like uh, we can call a database as a collection of data right inside the database we have data right so this normalization is what it is a technique that we are going to use in order to organize the data inside the database right so that's the idea it's a small technique it's not a big thing it's a small technique and this technique is helping us to organize the data inside the database right and let's see why we need normalization right so uh, like uh, if we if we don't have like this particular normalization technique right okay uh, it becomes difficult to handle the database data right so it says like it difficult to handle and update the database without facing data loss let's say we have like very valuable set of data right and uh, like very valuable think about the organizations Let's say organization is maintaining their like employee details within the database, right? So when we are going to update it, update the database, we are losing data. Then what will happen? We will lose our like valuable set of information, right? So why uh, like uh, it is happening? Because that database is not properly normalized, 
that's the idea right so normalization would help you to organize the data in a database in a proper way and it will like uh, eliminate all the problems like see difficulties are the problems available with the databases and it will like uh, ensure that you don't like uh, you uh, what uh, lose any data inside the database that's the idea right so children i'm taking an example right you can see this is a relation right relation name is the lecturer right and uh, we have uh, different fields in this relation right id name address salary department number department name and the building so this is another field right so here lecturer is the relation name and we have few fields uh, id name address salary department number department name and the building right okay so i'll show you a sample data set for this right uh, okay so i have added uh, like sample data for this particular table this table is uh, inside the database right so here you could see uh, id i have taken 001 and the name is Anne. candy uh, is the address salary uh, and then department number is there department name computing and the building name it's available and we have another record the id is two and we have all these fields available and the building uh, city campus and then we have the like id three and we have the name address and the salary information department number the same department computing computing and the building name and we have another record right here the fourth record id is four and then uh, we have all the records here and the uh, department number is three that is the department uh, the law department and the building name is the access tower so like that we have records now right so within an organization like uh, normally we don't have just four records right okay we have many number of records let's say we have like uh, 100 plus employees 150 employees then we might have 150 records right in this particular table the or the relation called lecturer right so now like uh, this database right the database which is available like uh, which the table which is available right uh, it is not a normalized table or normalized database so here we we have not done any normalization right so they, uh, because of that i told you when we are handling uh, data or when we are when we are going to update the data right we might face we might end up with a data loss right so in that case we could like uh, face with three different anomalies right if we don't have a normalized database like uh, most of the time right dba the database administrator who's working with the database okay can uh, face with three different anomalies right so uh, the first anomaly would be the insertion anomaly let's see what is that and the second anomaly would be the deletion anomaly and then third anomaly would be the update anomaly right so let's see what is this insertion anomaly right so here like uh, i told you this particular database is not normalized database right so if you're going to insert another record let's say we have another lecturer who is working under the computing department right so we might uh, insert okay we might insert zero and let's say peter right from candy okay and let's say salary is this and the same department zero one computing and if it is the computing department okay that is the building name is candy campus right so we got an anomaly now what is the anomaly the same data see department number zero one department name computing building candy campus these are repeating again and again data redundancy see like even Annie is working under the computing department and also Jane is also working under the computing department this Peter also working under the computing department so when we are inserting uh, 
data or the rows or the tuples to this particular table, what will happen? The same type of data is going to be redundant, right? See, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. The department number is redundant now. And not only the number, right? Name and the building. Right, so data redundancy is there. Right, we are like as a like database administrator, what we supposed to do is like uh, we supposed to avoid data redundancy. Right, what is the purpose of having a database with data redundancy? We are if we are maintaining a lot of like duplicate data inside the database, that is not a proper database. Right, so we have the insertion anomaly now. Right, so uh, according to the lecture slide you would be able to see here, it says, okay, uh, as we discuss, this is the insertion anomaly, right? And uh, here, uh, see, ensure that correct department information is in inserted, right? And also another thing is available, right? Another thing is available. Let's say now this data entry operator, right? Instead of uh, like inserting, uh, like computing like this is going to insert the computing like this all from caps like this so here same department department number is same department one but but you have two different names so data inconsistency is available right so here like uh, see same department but you have different two names right computer it doesn't understand okay these two are same thing why right? this is from like uh, starting from caps and then the other letters we are, have them all simple but here we have caps lock letters then what will happen computer cannot understand whether these two are same or not right think about an sql query you want to retrieve the lecturers right you want to retrieve the lecturers who are working you want to retrieve the lecturers name who are working in the computing department so then we supposed to give what right we supposed to give select all no, select, uh, okay, let's say name. Okay, we are interested of, about the names. Select name from the lecturer relation. Where, what? D name, what you supposed to give? Is it this computing? If we give it like this, right? So it will retrieve only Anne and Jane, not the Peter. Right. So what we have data inconsistency, inconsistency also available, right? Even redundancy and also the inconsistency, right? So this is the insertion anomaly that we have, right? So this is a problem, right? This is a problem. We are not getting the correct set of data, right? Uh, I mean, it is a problem of handling the database. So this is an unnormalized database. So we can uh, like, um, face with this particular problem which is known as the insertion anomaly and the next one i told you that is the deletion anomaly right let's say now uh, lily right the lecturer lily right is going to leave the leave this particular organization right now she is going to leave the organization right once she left the organization right no longer the organization is not going to be interested on her record Right. What we are going to do is we are going to delete this particular. OK, it is not erasing. So I'm going to delete this particular record. Right. We want to delete it. Now, what will happen? OK, once we delete this particular Lily's record, right, we are deleting the department details as well, because for the lower department, we had just one lecturer. Right now, like we are clueless whether like we have a low department or not inside the organization. Why that records are not available, right? Those records are not available. See, right? We can't find any department call low, but it's there, right? So this is known as what deletion anomaly. Okay, right? So we understood, okay, we, got, we are getting the insertion anomaly as well as deletion anomaly. Right. And let's say what is this update anomaly? Right. Let's say now, OK, uh, this uh, this department, the computing department, it's inside the Candy Campus. Right. Let's say now the organization has changed the location of this Candy Campus. Right. They have changed the location and they have renamed the building. Right. They have gone for another building. Let's say Pera Denia. Now they want to like name it as a Pera Denia Campus. Let's say something like that. 
there are the new city campus or something like that okay now like when we are going to update it right see how many records that we supposed to update we have to update this particular place right and we have to update this particular place and we have to update th this particular place right and let's say if we are, if you have 150 employees who are working under the computing department we have to update 150 records individually Right? because we have to change the building name because candy have campus they have relocated right so this is what this is update anomaly right so here like uh, why we are using some kind of a database because like uh, we want to make our things more easier right we are not developing systems to make our things more worse right like if the process is very easy only users are tend to use the system or tend to use the what, databases right so here now this is an unnormalized right okay an unnormalized database so here we have three different anomalies right insertion anomaly as well as what deletion anomaly as well as updating anomaly okay so these are the three anomalies that we could get right during this unnormalized if we have some kind of an unnormalized database right so ch children i hope it is clear for you right please uh, ask questions if it is not clear regarding the like uh, what anomalies that we were discussed yeah any questions so if so please uh, like you can use the chat yeah or you can raise your hand is it clear up to this point like um, uh, why what is this normalization and why we need this normalization right this is not a like uh, some kind of a like rocket science or anything right just a normal thing like uh, which we are using to like uh, what uh, normalize a database right because normalization is a technique right we need to understand that it is a technique we can uh, like organize data inside the database okay thank you nuhansa okay right so i hope it is clear for everyone okay so now let's see what are the normal forms available right normalization rules or the normal forms uh, available right uh, in the uh, dbms right so uh, the we have like i told you when i'm starting the session right i mentioned that uh, in your syllabus uh, like uh, you have three normal forms right and when you are like learning further right if you if you want to learn further you in under the computer science stream you will learn another like uh, normal form called bcnf voice code normal form right so we have uh, four uh, normalization rules normal forms right first normal form second normal form third normal form and the bcnf right we can write these things in a like a shorter way right first normal form we can write it like one nf right the same thing right first normal form we would be able to write it like this as well in a shorter form right and second normal form this is how we supposed to write it sorry for that okay see second normal form and the third normal form it is like this sorry for that um, okay and the bcnf we can write it like this and the like uh, uh, the i mean the, the term bcnf stands for voice code normal form that's the idea right so now let's see one by one right let's see what is this first normal form and the second normal form and the third normal form and then at last let's see what is this bcnf right so let's move with the first normal form right okay uh now now i mean in your syllabus they are not asking what is this first normal form and if it is in the first normal form right what are the like characteristics they are not asking that day like uh i mean they are giving like i have seen few questions they are giving a table and you supposed to write uh, the, whether the right like, relation is in which normal form you're supposed to identify what is the normal form it is in and what is the next normal form that you can convert it 
right? And then you have to provide the justification why you say like uh, it is in the like uh, first normal form or the second normal form or the third normal form, right? You have to provide a proper justification. That's it, right? So in order to like understand this, let's see like what is this first normal form, right? Okay, what is this first normal form? Like uh, it says. If a relation or a table, we know like uh, in a relational database, uh, like uh, uh, terminology, we are not using the term called table, we call it as a relation, right? So this is a relation, see, this is a, a student relation, right? You can see student uh, field is there, age field is there, subject field is there, we could say a student detail relation. We can give a name for the table called student details, right? So normally, uh, in a relational database, we are calling a table as a relation, right? Okay, so this is student detail relation, right? So in this relation, uh, if it is in the, like, uh, if the relation, right, is in the normal form, right, if domains of all attributes in the relation are atomic or simple and indivisible, what is that, right? So now you could identify these are attributes student uh, student details relation student is an attribute right okay and age is an attribute right subject is an attribute we know that right and domain of all attributes this student we have names this adam is the domain right age 15 is the domain right subject biology maths it's a domain right these domains should be atomic domains right we cannot have multiple values like this look at this one student adam age is 15 and he is doing he is following two particular subjects one subject is the biology and the other one is the match so here in a particular attribute we cannot have multiple values like this multiple domain like this domain should be simple and indivisible like this see just one okay so if you are getting a table like this table with you have a column or you have an attribute or you have a field with multiple values like this so that relation is not in the first normal form that's the idea right what is that again i'm repeating if you are getting a relation right which is having multiple values for a domain right uh, under like under any att attribute right multiple values like that like like this in a domain for the domain so this relation is not in the first normal form right it is not in the first normal form it has not started the normalization process even right so if i take this particular relation they have not performed any normalization theory right okay so now what is the next normal form we can make it as first normal form that's the idea. So how we can make it as a first normal form? Now it, it clearly says, right? Okay, we are having a question. Yeah, multi-value attributes. If you have multi-value attributes, right, like this, right, this relation is not in the what first normal form, right? Okay, if you have multi-value attributes like this, this uh, relation is not in the first normal form but uh, like uh, if you can remember when you are like uh, mapping your er diagram if you know the correct theory of mapping a multi-value attribute into a relational mapping if you know the correct theory you won't get any tables like this any you won't get any relations like this once i told you if, it, if, if you can remember on my last session yeah i told you if you if you have followed all the er diagram rules right correctly right you won't get any like what uh what, unnormalized tables that's the idea right so like sometimes like if you miss something in the er diagram so you will get these sort of tables that's the idea so multi-value attributes yes right so if we hear the multi-value attribute this could be a telephone number right okay see you have student age and the telephone number under telephone number you have a lot of values right so this is not in the first normal form so let's see how we can make it into the first normal form okay so once we uh, my slides are not moving let me check okay right so here once you converted 
your relation into what uh, first normal form so what we can do is we can have multiple rows for the values for different values see can you remember adam adam is following two different subjects so i i have put two rows for adam like this adam age is 15 biology adam age is 15 max see alex was the other like see the row we had and the steward right so here uh look at this one now we have added two rows for adam because he is following two different subjects that's the idea i have another example look at this right uh course right here and we have the content here available the next one course is the programming content is java and c plus plus right and course it's web we have html php and asp so this is not in what first normal form this one right so after converting to right first normal form right this is how we can go ahead we we have the course and content and then uh, for programming we have two records two tuples like like this programming java programming c plus plus and web we have three values so because of that web html web php web asp like that we can have right so now children can you identify any problem here right now this table it's in the first normal form now first normal form rule is okay right see domain just atomic value indivisible just one value programming just one value java programming c plus plus see just one value right yeah any problem yes right some courses are repeating again duplication of data yes we have heavy data duplication now see programming programming web 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 right heavy data duplication is there but we if we take these two together programming java sorry together it is unique even though we have duplicated data like there is no way to identify them right so now what is the like uh, primary key that you're going to select we can't select any primary key right so then what we can do is we can make these two things as a primary key so if we may um, like uh, make it combine the both fields then it is unique right but here we have heavy data duplication right so here it's data redundancy increases further right as there will be many columns with same data in multiple rows right see same data programming programming web 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 same data right and but each row as a whole will be unique right okay so then uh what in uh, like uh, what is the like uh, characteristics of a first normal form you have to understand this very clearly right if you have atomic domain values right in your relation like this atomic domain value see atomic domain value further we cannot divide it i mean divide it java it's just one value but here these are not atomic we can further divide it html is a different thing php is a different thing asp is a different thing we can divide it right divisible right okay so if you have like domains like attributes with domains right in the indivisible domains or the atomic domains that particular table you can guarantee that is on the first normal form right that's the idea so we understood that right that is in the first normal form right so what is the rule the rule should be what your relation right okay a relation r is in first normal form if domains of all attributes all the attributes huh? the student attribute age attribute subject attribute in the relation are atomic that means may be simple or indivisible then you could guarantee okay this is in the first normal form see this is in the first normal form see all are atomic values right so this is also in first normal form right so uh children do you have any questions there like in the first normal form is it clear any questions anything that you want to ask
Okay. Thanks, Dizara. So why I'm not uh, switching on my uh, camera today because I'm experiencing a power cut, right? Uh, still, uh, like all the academics at APIT, we are like doing working from home, but uh, IT uh, department and the marketing department and the management, they are like moving to office, right? Uh, but uh, today I'm experiencing a power cut, so I have a bad lighting setup here. So that's why like I'm not switching on my camera today, okay? So next week, let's see, most of the time I would be available at office, okay? Right, so uh, let's see, the second normal form, right? Mm, right, okay, we discussed this as well, right? So uh, let's see, what is this second normal form? Uh, here, if a relation, now you have a relation in front of you, right? Let's say something like that. Let's imagine something like that. You have a relation in front of you, right? And in order to check whether this given relation is in, right? Second normal form, right? First, it should satisfy the first normal form, right? So the, these are like steps, right? In order to move to the second normal form, First, you need to satisfy the first, no, first normal form. That means you, you don't have any like multi-value attributes with you, right? All like attributes, domains are atomic. So that is for sure. Okay, first normal form done. Okay, so in order to like uh, be inside the second normal form, you have to satisfy the first criteria, first normal form. And, right, you have to satisfy the first normal form. It says, and, okay, see, and, Right, every non prime attribute A in R is not partially dependent on any key of R. I know, like, uh, this is not uh, very clear to you. Right, I'll take some examples and let you know. Okay, so here we have another new word called non prime attributes. Right, children, we have two things, two types of attributes, right, uh, within a relation. We have prime attributes as well as non prime attributes. Right. So I'll uh, take one example. Right. Okay. Let me take the whiteboard. I'll use this one. Okay. Let's say we have a relation uh, called what? Uh, um, let's say employee. They have employee relation. Right. And they are, let's say we have EMP ID, employee ID. Right. And let's say uh, NIC, that's the National Identity Card. And let's say EMP name, employee name, right? And let's say uh, EMP age, okay, right? Let's say this is the relation. And here, these two are the primary keys, right? So DBA can decide on, okay, what are the primary keys that you're going to include, right? So here, I have selected these two primary keys. Right, so we have two terms now. Right, uh, the first term is prime attributes. Okay, prime attributes. Okay, prime attributes means any attribute, right, which are participating for the primary key is known as prime attributes. Sometimes it could be two, it could be one or more. Right. See, prime attribute means any attribute which is participating for the primary key. Right. Here, uh, just use your chat and send me what are the prime attributes available in this particular employee relation. Yeah. Just tell me what are the prime attributes. Yeah. We got an answer. Yes. EMPID and the NIC. Yes. Good. Right. So here, according to this example. We have two prime attributes. One is the EMP ID and the NIC, right? These are participating for the primary key, right? Those are known as prime attributes. And the other way around, right? Uh, non prime attributes. Okay. Right? Non prime attribute means other attributes are falling into the category called non-prime attributes. That means those who are not participating for the primary key. Yes. Yes, very good. What are those two we have here, right? 
EMP name and EMP age. Right. So now we got to know about these two terms, right? Prime attributes, non-prime attributes. Right. Okay. Now we have that idea with us. Right. Now let's go move back to the like um, lecture slide. Okay. It says every non-prime attribute, right? A, right? Okay. In R is not partially dependent on any key of R. Okay. Right. Let's move back. Right. So now it's, it is talking about the non-prime attributes, right? That means the, the attributes which are not participating for the, what, um, relation uh, for the primary key right okay now let's see uh, we have an employee a different one employee relation Sorry. employee relation right let's say we have a uh, emp id it's there right emp name right and uh, let's say we have a uh, department did right Okay, these two are the primary keys and we have the name. Okay, and uh, let's say, uh, yeah, that's it. Or age. Okay, look at this now, right? So we have employee ID and the department ID, the employee name, department name and the age, right? Now, right, it says now, what is, we have to understand, the, uh, like there was another term, right? If you have like noted it down, see, partial dependency, right? We need to understand what is this partial dependency. They, 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 they are mentioning that you cannot have any partial dependencies and it's about the non-prime attributes, right? So let's see. Now, uh, if we take this particular example, you could see, right? We have employee ID and the department ID as the primary keys, right? And here, uh, like if we take this like okay i'll like switch swap the places of the like uh, these two attributes i'll take the department id here so now you can draw it like this now emp name okay right so now here if we take this employee name right okay employee name this is a non-prime non attribute Okay, this is because employee name is not participating for the primary key. So this is a non-prime attribute. And this attribute is only depending on the employee ID, right? It is not depending on the department ID, you know, right? Okay, employee name is only depending on the department ID, employee ID, right? Is it clear? EMP name we can identify by using the employee ID. You know, department ID is not going to do anything with this, right? Okay, so that means see this non-prime attribute is partially depending on this primary key, right? And look at this one, department name, right? Department name is depending on the department ID, right? See, department name is depart uh, depending on the department ID. And think about the age. Age is not going to do anything with the department ID, right? Age is depending on the employee ID, right? So this is known as a partial dependency. Why? These non-prime attributes are partially depending on the primary keys attributes. See, right? Full dependency is this. Look at this one. Employee ID, NIC, employee name is fully depending on the employee ID and the NIC, right? Employee age is fully depending on the employee ID and the NIC, the primary key. The entire thing is the primary key, right? This is full dependencies, FDs, right? But here what we have, we have not the FDs, we have partial dependencies, right? Half of the primary key, right? This employee name is depending on the half of the primary key. It's a partial dependency. Right, because primary key it has like made with the employee ID and the department ID, so it is not a fully but dependent. Like all the non-prime attributes are what partially dependent on the primary key. So this is not the case of two NF, right? So if you if you have a relation, right, and if you want to make sure whether the relation is in the second normal form, you cannot have partial dependencies like this. 
right so let's move back to the lecture slide i have a what example there look at this okay right uh, the relation name is employee project that means the like we want to track uh, the employees who are working inside the projects and what what are the projects that they work for and the number of hours and all and look at this one here uh, the we have primary key right the nic and the pnum is making the primary key up right pnum is the project number right and the, this is the employee nic right and here we have a like what full dependency right see this full dependency is there why right? the number of hours are depending on what the employee who worked and within which project right see number of hours are like depending on these both both uh, like uh, uh, prime attributes right hours of work right who's the employee and what is the project right so here number of hours are depending on uh, like fully depending on the primary key that's okay but think about the e name right employee name it is not depending on the project number no right it is depending only on the nic right and look at this project name and the project location these two are not depending on the employee right these two are depending on the project number right so here this is in what uh, maybe this is in 1nf but not in second normal form why we have partial dependencies see it says we have partial dependencies right so non prime attributes are, de are having dependencies what type of dependencies partial dependencies right so if we make it right as a like a 2nf okay uh, relations right we would get a separate uh, table called employee we need a separate table called employee for that we could have the nic that's the primary key and then e name okay so we would have a like employee relation and we would have another relation called project right for project we need to have p num that means the project number and p name that is the project name and the location block right and here we have like hours as well working hours so that means we could have another uh, what uh, relation called workload right for there we need to have who worked right that means we can identify it from the nic on which project that means p num and hours okay so these two would be the primary keys right and these two are foreign keys as well right nic comes from the employee relation p num comes from the project relation right so now these are in the second normal form okay so children is it clear right if it is if a, if you want to check if a relation is in the second normal form first thing is what uh first thing is what it should be in the first normal form and then uh it should not contain any partial dependencies right partial dependencies means non-prime attributes are depending partially on the primary key that's the idea right uh is it clear for you yeah uh, i got a question uh, just so it hashini yes uh, when writing an attribute is there a specific way to write it like any regulation is it necessary to use the underscore between two words when writing an attribute for example emp underscore id yeah good question in your case children right since you are like uh, providing answers for the advanced level paper right uh, use the names that they have given right if they have given the attribute names by using the underscore you have to write the exact word exact attribute name 
right but when you are like into the computer science field you can have your own naming conversions right some are writing some are using underscore in order to separate the attributes right okay some are not using underscore signs like in order to separate the letters right uh, the words in the attribute some are using something like this this is known as the camel notation we have right if we like now empid you know the first letter uh, sorry the first letter emp id like this right camel notation right first letter of the uh, like word is capital all others are simple or uh, some are using like you told me emp id like this some are not using uh, any underscore anything but remember when you are into database or uh, when you are into programming uh, in order to separate two words you can only use the underscore sign any other signs you can't use like at right exclamation mark hashtag these we cannot use these things these signs right these are these signs they have special meaning uh, when it comes to the databases and when it comes to the programming right so we can use only the underscore sign okay so like here my advice is since you are addressing the a level paper right if they have given the attribute names like this right then please use the exact names if they have not given the attribute names you if you have the like normally they are giving i have seen right normally they are giving the attributes names so if they have used all caps go for all caps right don't change the name because i have seen within the marking scheme they have mentioned you supposed to use the exact like uh, attribute name that they have given okay that's so that's my answer so uh, like uh, is it clear uh, hashini or is it clear yeah if they haven't given then you can go ahead with any like uh, like naming conversion that you like anything is possible right if they have if they have haven't given it then you can go with either like uh, what any uh, like naming convention right so anything that you want to ask hope it is clear right so we have completed second normal form right second normal form remember you have to satisfy the first normal form that means you need to have atomic domains for all the attributes right and then right you cannot have any partial dependencies right okay all relations they need to have full dependencies see full dependencies e name is depending on sorry uh, e name is depending on the nic right see uh, project name is depending on the project number location is depending on the project number right and nic and the pnum hours are depending on the these two like attributes right so hours work hours right who's the uh, uh, like employee and what is the project right like that okay so let's move to the third normal form i told you these are steps right uh, i told you these are steps okay uh, so because of that right uh, in order to like uh, satisfy the third normal form in order to satisfy the third normal form you have to satisfy the second normal form first that means you don't have any partial dependencies within your relation right it's for sure right so look at this a relation r is third normal form if r the relation is in second normal form and we have another rule right what is that it says uh, no non prime attribute again it is talking about non prime attribute is transitively dependent on any key okay it says again let's let's read it again and see no non prime attribute okay our non prime attributes we know now now we have another dependency right what is that transitive dependency right so let's see what is this right i i think like these terms are like uh, like uh, maybe like uh, very like uh, 
not familiar for you but let's see what is this right okay look I, i'm uh, directly going to take this particular example and i'll take another example and show you right look at this now uh see uh employee department table is there right employee department table is there right so this organization use using this type of a like table to store the employee details and department details right see very like uh, unfamiliar thing right so uh, like uh, it is not normalized now that's the idea so here like uh, look at this uh, social security number is the you know, what ssn is the what uh, uh, unique or the primary key here right because we know like in sri lanka we don't have ssn we have the nic right but in america like uh, they are getting each and every like individual citizen they are getting this ssn right social security number right that's a unique thing right so here ssn is there it's a unique one unique uh, that's a primary key and we have the employee name we have the uh, date of birth right and we have the uh, address right and we have the department number we have the department name and the department manager okay right look at this now right we have like uh, we, we i mean it says transitively dependent okay let's see what is this right now uh, we know e name is depending on ssn okay yes social security number uh, having some kind of an impact with the e name and then date of birth okay yes ssn depending on ssn address yes and which department the employee is working yes we can have this department number because we need to identify you know what is the department that the employee is working and we have another type of thing what is that this department name is depending on the department number right department manager is depending on the department number now what department number is not related to the primary key it is not a like prime attribute see you can see here we have only one prime attribute which is the ssn right so department number also what non prime attribute okay it is also a non prime attribute now what the manager the the manager department manager and the department name those two also are what non prime attributes so non prime attribute are depending on another non prime attribute right see it's like very like un unfamiliar thing right Dep uh, non prime attribute is depending on another non prime attribute so these dependencies are known as transitive dependencies that's the name right transitive dependency okay we know the name right so what is this transitive dependency is non prime attributes are depending on another non prime attribute that cannot be happen non prime attributes always depending on a prime attribute right if it is a proper relation but here non prime attributes are depending on another non prime attribute so this is not in the third normal form if it is in the third normal form you have to satisfy the second normal form and then there cannot be any transitive dependencies what is that no non prime attribute can can be what depending on another non prime attribute those types of dependencies cannot be apply here right so what we can do right so what we can do we can make it as third normal form right so we can have a separate relation for employee right and we have ssn right that's the primary key e name okay and then uh, date of birth right b date and the address i don't have space here and then the department number okay department number because we have want to track what is the department this particular employee is working and then we could have another relation called department okay and their d num would be the primary key so this c is what then foreign key see this is a foreign key and then d name and department manager see so now we could say okay see no like the non prime attribute is depending on another non prime attribute no no transitive dependencies are available 
right so that means we could guarantee here we don't have any what uh, partial dependencies so that means we can guarantee this relation these two relations are on uh, second nf right to nf and also no transitive dependencies are there so this these relations those are in third normal form that's the idea right what is this transitive dependency non prime attributes depends on a another non prime attribute okay okay we got a question so let's see yes right yes hashini in this case we are making the d number as the primary key right because see this these two things are depending on the d num then that's this none that now in this employee department relation it's just a non prime attribute but it has some kind of a significant like a, uh what um, uh, behavior right it's a unique thing so then we can have a separate relation called department and then we can make the department number as the unique field then we have the department name and the department manager is depending on this uh, like this department number and this department number here which is residing inside the employee table that is a foreign key see uh, department number is the primary key of the department relation and it has gone to the employee relation and it has become what as the uh, foreign key that's the idea so uh, yeah any questions is it clear yeah uh no not like an assumption right okay not like an assumption here uh, uh we could understand this primary key this this particular non prime attribute in this employee department right okay uh, these two things see department name we could identify from the department number because it's a unique thing no normally right normally that's the case right so here uh, what uh, department name department manager these things are depending on the dna right so you could assume that since these two are depending on uh, like uh, this dna attribute you can make it as a primary key that's the idea okay since these two attributes non prime attributes are depending on this particular attribute so you can make it as the uh, what uh, uh, primary key in the second relation that's the idea okay hope you got the answer for that okay right good so uh, another extra thing i told you bcnf right it's nothing much right okay uh, like uh, yes here the advantage of removing transitive dependencies amount of data duplication is reduced data integrity is achieved what is that see if you are using the same table something like the previous example which i have used the lecturer table if you can remember uh, yeah this table same thing data redundancy see department number department name and the building these things are these two non prime attributes are depending on this right so see we have data redundancy so we can remove the data redundancy and we have the data integrity see the data you know, consistency is there i told you i have explained this right so that's the idea okay uh, so boys code it is not a uh, like very big thing right if you have done all the like uh, normalization rules that means if you have done up to the third normalization form then automatically you have achieved the boys and cot normal form it says here right now uh, okay let's read this if a relation right uh, if, if a relation it is in the boys cot normal form definitely it should satisfy the 3nf and right 
every non trivial functional dependency right see this uh, a is depending on x hold in r then x should be a super key of r that means here look at this now uh, d name is depending on d num right okay and d manager is depending on d num right and here this d num should be the super key right it should be a, a super key right this is a must that's why now i told you normally like if we have completed the third normal form automatically the voice code is available so don't worry right so see it's this is the dnum is the super key yeah it's it's understood right so here look at this one e name is depending on ssn social security number so this e name is depending on a super key on the super key of the employee relation that is what the voice code says right so if it is like uh, your syllabus we don't have this voice code i just like uh, teach you because like uh, when you are like teach like learning things in the computer science you will like meet this but normally like if we have follow all the like normalization rules properly right definitely these things are uh, available uh, but uh, uh, in the what voice code is available automatically in the relation that's the idea okay so uh, can you remember now fifth normal form it's about atomic uh, domains right you can't have any multi values domains right those should be atomic domains right second normal form means the relation should be in first normal form and cannot have any partial dependencies right third normal form means the relation should be in the second normal form and there cannot be any transitive de dependencies that's the idea right so uh, is it clear up to that point what do you think yeah what do you think okay right so hope it is clear for you now okay right so let's move for a few questions because today the time is very limited right so let me exit from the right okay uh, here i have given like i have taken two questions from my end and i have taken 2020 question and the uh, 2019 question as well right so first let's do a small question and let's move to the advanced level questions right so here uh look at this this is a very like uh, easy one right uh, a company uses the table below to record details of staff right each staff has up to three qualifications okay see now each staff has up to three different qualifications right we can see that right see uh it's there explain why this table is not in the first normal form okay you can send me the answers quickly you can use the chat why are you saying that this normal uh, this uh, relation is not in the first normal form yes send me the answers quickly you can use the chat why this relation is not in the first now remember okay recall the things that we have like learned what is first normal form yes multi-value attributes are presented there are multiple values under the qualification entry multi-value attributes are available yes you can go ahead or here we don't have in we under the qualification attribute we don't have atomic domains right these are we have what divisible domain right okay right your answer is correct good show how this table can be transformed into one nf table right so like uh, it's really easy how you can transfer this into a one nf table definitely you need to have a column called staff id so i'm going to use the exact attribute names that they have given and the staff name you better draw the table here i'm not going to draw it because like uh, since i'm using the virtual uh, whiteboard it is difficult to draw right qualifications okay so if we take the s01 okay uh, okay manga 
and BSC, right? And then S01 again, because here we have another qualification comes under this particular uh, S01, right? MSC, right? And S01, again, we need to write it, right? And PhD, okay? And then S02, Kumar, BSC, okay? And again, S02, we have another one, right? And then Kumar, right? And MSc, right? And S03, uh, Grant, again, BSc, and S03, Grant, PhD, okay? And uh, in your case, right, when you're writing this, uh, so tell me, uh, I mean, uh, what, what are the primary keys that we're supposed to, like, uh, uh, designate uh, is it enough to have the staff id or like uh, are we supposed to take a composite primary key what do you think yep yes yes for oh, staff id is enough okay right so if i make the staff id as the primary key you could see it is repeating duplicating no if it is if it is the primary key we cannot have duplicate values. See, S01, 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 S01. Repeating. S02, S02, S03, S03. Repeating. So, is this enough for the primary key? Yep. Yeah. Is this enough? You have to think those things as well. Because you need to show. Yes, we have a problem now. Yeah, we need a composite key, right? Okay, now what? What do you think? Now, is it enough? Staff ID, staff name, is it enough? Mm. No, we have to make this one as the primary key as well now we have a composite primary key right if you are going to draw these like uh, if you if you get a question like this uh, you have to you supposed to like underline the primary keys please make sure to underline all three right uh, attributes as a pri primary key because entire thing together it's unique see is zero one ibanga bsc it's unique that's it okay uh, like uh, separately, these attributes are not unique. So you have to, you are getting a mark for this as well. Okay. Right. So let's move to the other question. Mm, which one? This one. Okay. Look at this. Sorry. Yeah. The following table stores details of employees and the projects they work on and for how long okay the following table stores details of employees and the projects they work and for how long right so here primary keys employee id and the project id right this table name or the relation name is the workload right so here employee id employee name project id project name and hours per week right okay Explain why the above table is not in the second normal form. Yes, got an answer. Yes, partial dependencies are there. Very good, right? So see partial dependencies, right? Uh, this uh, employee name is depending on this, right? Project name is depending on the project ID. Hours per week is depending on both things, right? Transform the table into second normal form table. So in this case, like normally, no need to write the data there, right? Okay. They are in the A-level paper, I have seen they are asking you to not to write the data, just the relations, right? So then we could have a like table called employee. Okay. They have not given the name, no, so you can decide on the name for that, right? Employee but they have given the attribute name, EMP ID. Okay, that's the primary key. And then we have EMP name, e name. See, this is the camel notation, right? And then uh, we have a project. You can go with project relation and then project ID, P 
P-R-O-J and I-D. That's the primary key. And then project name. Name. Okay. And then hours per week. These, I mean, uh, that is depending on the who's the employee and what is the project. So you can go with workload. Okay. So that means EMP ID and comma project ID. And hours per week. Okay, so these two are primary keys. So there are no any attributes for these relations. So you can close them, right? So here in the workload, right, hours per week, these, the, this one is depending on the employee ID as well as the project ID. Who's the employee? What is the project? That's the idea, right? So uh, is it clear? These two questions are really easy, right? Okay, let's move for the like... Uh, 2019 question, I think. This is the 19 one. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, like here, you like you might feel like they have given a longer description, but here, when you read it, there is no nothing much available in the description. Okay. So here it says a vehicle rental company has registered vehicle owners, right? Okay, a vehicle rental company has registered vehicle owners, right? Vehicles are obtained from the owners and rented to the customers, right? Vehicles are obtained from the owners and they are going to rent it to the customers. The normal scenario which is happening in the real world, right? If you take a cab service, this is the process. Consider the following relations regarding the vehicle rental company, right? So here we have three relations. Look at this. Customer, customer NIC, customer name, city, postal code, right? Vehicle owner is another relation. Owner ID, owner name, contact number. Vehicle is another relation. Vehicle registration number, description, and the owner ID. Who's the owner, right? The customer relation contains customer's national identity card number, which is unique. All ah, right. So this is your paper, right? So you better underline it. Okay, this is the primary key. Right, which is unique. Uh, name, city, where he or she is living, and the postal code of the city. The customer lives in a single city, and there are many customers in one city. Yes, it could be happened, no? That can be, there could be many number of but, uh, customers, right? The postal code depends on the city. All right, so we are getting a, like a, what? Something now, right? Postal code, right, okay, depends on the city. All right. So quickly tell me what is this dependency? Postal code is depending on the city attribute. Right? What is this dependency? Yes, we got an answer. Transitive dependency. Very good. Right? Transitive dependency. Yeah. Right? Non-prime attribute is depending on another non-prime attribute. Right. Uh, next point. The vehicle owner relation contains the over ID, owner ID, which is unique. All right. Okay. Owner ID, which is unique. Owner's name and the contact number. Okay. Owner's name and the contact number. That's it for the like vehicle owner relation. The vehicle relation contains the vehicle registration number, which is unique. Right. Which is unique. And a description about the vehicle and the owner ID. Okay. So that's it. No? Those are the like things they have given. Right. Now, a customer can rent more than one vehicle because like why, why they have given these things because you're supposed to draw the ER diagram. I'm not going to do that today, right? So here, uh, that's why they have given this uh, additional information. Also, it is possible to rent one vehicle to many customers, right? At different instances, each vehicle is owned by a one owner and one owner can have more than one vehicle. These things, they want to many these things, right? Okay, the question number one, A. The part A, in which normal form do the above relations given in 1, 2, 3 above exist, right? Justify your answer, right? Now they are asking in which relation, uh, normalization form, now these relations are available, right? They are asking about the relation 1, see the first one, the customer, relation 2, relation 3. What is the existing normal form that they are asking? 
Okay, so let's do, yes. First one and uh, yeah, tell me the answers. Okay. Uh, first one, first relation, the customer relation. What is the normal form, existing normal form? Yeah, we got an answer. Yes, here, first normal form, it is, it is not talking about any multi-value attributes. And here, uh, yes, here, uh, the what? Uh, we don't have any partial dependencies. We have a transitive dependency, right? So if it is a second normal form, that means you the relation should be in the first normal form and you don't have any partial dependencies, right? Here, this is not the first relation. It is not in the third normal form. Why? We have a transitive dependency. Once we remove this only, this will convert it to the third normal form, right? So that means first relation, we could say it's already in the second normal form, but not in the third normal form. Why? Transitive dependency is available, right? Second normal form, sorry, second relation, the vehicle owner and the uh, vehicle Second and third. Yeah, already, right? We don't have any partial dependencies. We don't have any transitive dependencies. So definitely these two are on the third normal form. Both the tables or the relations are on the third normal form. Very good, right? We are getting answers. Very well. Right. Okay. Uh, right. Now it says, so we have done with the question A, done, right? And then uh, question B, convert the above relations to the next normal form from the current normal form, which you have stated, present the contents relevant to the labels, right? P to U, indicate in the following table as you answer, right? So here we are supposed to do the normalization and then uh, we have to tell, right, what is the next normal form and then you have to write the relations which are available in the next normal form. So let's think about the relation number one, the first relation, right? Uh, the next normal form, now it's already in, in the 2NF. So next P, this answer, P. What is the answer for the P? What is the next normal form for the first relation? Yeah, we got answers. Very good, right? Third normal form. Yeah, right. So, yes, that means we're supposed to do the third normal form and then we have to write the answers, relations. Can you type it and send it to me? The, like, I mean, remove the, like, uh, transitive uh, dependency and create the relations and send it to me. Can you do it? Just type it and send it to me. You can use your brackets and all, so no issue. Yes. Okay, uh, here the C. City is depend, postal code is depending on the city. So we can have a what? Customer relation. Use the exact terms that they have given. If they have given customer relation, starting from a capital word, use the exact terms, right? Customer. And then uh, we have to give customer NIC. They have, they have used underscore there. So here, customer NIC. Yes, we got an answer. Yes, customer name, yeah, right, customer name here. Customer name, right, name, I'm not going to close this. And then we can have another relation, you could go with customer city. Why I didn't put city? Because there cannot be the same relation name as well as the attribute, right? We have an attribute called city. So because of that, I cannot use that name to the relation name, right? Okay, you can go with address, good, right? No issue. So here I'm going to have the city and see this one would be the custom NIC would be the primary key here. 
Sitting is the primary key, right? So here city and postal code. Right? So then what we supposed to do? We have to make the city as the foreign key here. Now we have a connection, see? Right? So then we would be able to identify the postal code of the necessary city. Right? So here, this is how we can create the, uh, like, we can make it as what? Uh, uh, third normal form. Okay, right. So the these two are the answers, right? Q, Q means the second relation form. What is the next, uh, what, uh, Q? What is the next, uh, what, normalization form for the second uh, relation? Can we normalize it further? Don't talk about the voice code. Voice code is some kind of an additional thing. Can you, can you, know, can we normalize it? No, right? So here, you very good. Here you can define uh, can't normalize it further. Don't talk about the voice code here, right? Okay, further. And then, uh, but you're supposed to write the relation here, right? Write the relation here. So that means, uh, I can't see the relation. So because of that, I'm going to write the T here, right? T, you just write the relation, right? Vehicle owner, underscore owner, and then owner ID, underscore ID, and underline it, right? You need to show the primary keys and all, right? Owner name, you can write that, right? And same thing for the third uh, relation as well, no? Can we like further normalize it? Third relation? No, yes, we can't. Good, right? So again, you have to write R for answer for the R is can't normalize it further. For you, you have to write it, right? And when you're writing, please note down the what uh, primary key. For that, you are getting marks, okay? So this is the question you have uh, like in the uh, 2019 paper, right? So let's quickly move to the 2020 paper as well. Right, so this is the question. Uh, here, I'll zoom in a bit. Right. The winner, this is the winner table. Given below contains the details of the players who won different matches and medals. All right, right. So here, winner table, it contains the players who won different matches and medals, right? There is a fixed amount of price money given to each medal type. So here price, like uh, there are a fixed amount of like what? Uh, money for each medal type, right? That means the price is depending on the medal type. A gold medal has like 20,000, a silver medal has 10,000 and a bronze medal uh, has 5,000, right? Consider the primary key of the uh, winner table is the NIC and the match ID. Now what? Right? So here you need to underline, okay, NIC and the match ID is the primary key, right? So write an SQL statement to display the number of players who won gold medal. So you know, like, I'm not going to talk about this question. Let's see the second question, right? In which normal form does the above table exist? And justify your answer. Quickly tell me in which normal form do we have this particular table? Yes. Very good. It says here. Uh, it says here, right? Price is depending on the medal type. Note that, right? Price is depending on the medal type. So what is the dependency here we have? 
these two are in the like what primary key these two are the like what prime attributes so what is the dependency transitive yes right so if the transitive dependency is available that means this is not in the three ns but we don't have any partial dependencies so definitely this table or the relation it's in the second normal form how to justify your answer you could say no partial dependencies right and but transitive dependencies are there okay or you can just write transitive dependencies are there right so you could if you need you can draw this as well price is depending on the medal type okay like that convert the above table to the next normal form okay it is not required to write the data in the tables derive the next normal form no need to write the data on the what uh, uh, like uh, in the like just write the relations that's it right so how we can do that just send me answers if you can yeah so uh we can uh, yes we can have a table called medal right and there we could have the medal type see the price is depending on the medal type so we can make it as a primary key and we can include the price there okay and then we can have the winner table winner right nic and match id okay and these two are the primary keys and then we have to take this primary key as the foreign key what is the foreign key metal type okay right now the relation is in the normal form third normal form yes good very good right so uh that's about the what uh, normalization so any questions from the normalization is it clear now like uh, do you have any like uh, compare yourself like uh, i mean uh, when you are before you starting the session this particular session right okay the knowledge that you had related to the normalization and then compare what is the knowledge level that now you have right is it improved or what right so like uh, practice the normalization questions available in your past papers so then you would be able to like take a like a good idea how you are going to do these things and all right okay so any further questions so next week most of the time uh, like uh, another lecturer will do uh, yes yes dahami you have do you have a question with you we saw the raising hand option so uh, like a networking part right uh, like uh, uh, what uh, network diagram and the subnetting like those things and after that uh, we can uh, discuss uh, like uh, other like topics that you all have given for us right like logic gates context diagrams dft diagrams uh, okay yes do you need me to like explain the relational schemas okay i'll note down that right so i'll do a session for relational schema as well any other content that you need to like revise apart from the like uh, we got that uh, what uh, logic gates context diagram and the dft diagrams and the python and the networking that's it so if you have any other requests just uh, drop a message and let's see like uh, whether we can do it okay and let's do it no issue right so i'll talk about the relational schemas as well for sure yeah okay uh, any questions related to normalization
Yes.